All right, so in this video, we're gonna pick up where we left off. We've just added some uh, human tracks to our terrain on top of the animal trails we added before that. And we're gonna export our new height field with the added procedural path details, as well as the color information. Uh, we're also going to go and uh, export the trails in the ID map, and then we're gonna go ahead and set that up inside of Unreal and really showcase some of the advantages of this IDMapped based workflow when it comes to iteration speed and making uh, edits on the fly. So to begin with, let's go ahead and just save out the procedural edits. Now our procedural layer includes the, uh, the road. So we're just gonna go ahead and update that by hitting save to disk. And then similarly, we're gonna go to our uh, output here, which is gonna be outputting our color map on disk with the trails included. And last but not least, we'll go ahead and export our ID map with the new road layer included. Popping over to Unreal, we can see the terrain in the state that we left it. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open up the landscape editing panel. The shortcut I used was Shift and two. You can see that if you go up to the landscape mode here, you see this mode selection, Shift two there is going to open up the landscape editing mode. And I'm gonna just go ahead and make sure that the procedural layer here on the train is editable. Okay, because we're gonna be re-importing that using our digital asset. I'm gonna press Shift F1 to switch back to the regular view mode, the selection mode. And I'm gonna go ahead and press Alt 5, uh, in fact, Alt 6. And that's just gonna show us the terrain in its relief with uh, without any of the texture work on it. So now I'm gonna to go to the SOP PE load landscape. And I'm gonna make sure the settings are mode update existing, layer procedural edits. And then I'm gonna go ahead and actually, I don't even need to find the directory because we set that previously. So you wanna make sure it's pointing at the source content folder where you have those procedural edits. So just to be clear, that's gonna be, if we go and find that file cache, that's gonna be this directory here, Pegasus demo source content. Okay, so that's where we want it to be pointing to. And if that's all set up correctly, we're just gonna go ahead and hit reload. Okay. And we've just seen that when I had an update of the terrain. And if we have a look at this little region over here, we can clearly see that we now have some of these kind of lines cutting across our landscape, which is what we were hoping to see. That if we zoom out and have a look from the top down, that's gonna become a little bit more apparent that we have these kinds of interesting lines uh, all across our terrain uh, that we just, we just spent that time adding inside of Houdini. There we go, if we come over here, we should see that nice and clear. Uh, in fact, we just hold Control L and move the light around. Maybe we can bring some of those roads into sharp relief. Yeah, got some over there on that side. There you go. So yeah, we can verify that indeed we're getting some of those roads into our procedural layer on the terrain. Next up, we're going to go ahead and just select both of our both our color and our ID map texture. We're going to go ahead and right click and re-import. Okay, then we're going to verify that this has come in with the roads and we can see those lines now on that texture. The same is also true of the global color map there. So if we switch back to color mode with Alt F4, we can see straight away we've got some kind of details showing up on our terrain. Now, this isn't quite right because we've lost our cliffs and the sand doesn't appear to be correct anymore. So don't panic. The reason for that is uh, it's fairly straightforward. We just need to go to our material instance and we need to change the number of ID map layers to six. Because if you remember, when we were in Houdini and we set this up in the last video, we had to add an additional ID map layer to the ID map called trails. So we're just telling the material to be aware of that fact. And straight away, if we hop back and look at this again, we can see that the terrain is now showing up as it was before with our sand, the grass, and the other layers. And it's just our roads that appear to look a little bit odd. Okay, so why is that? Well, it's just because we haven't actually told the material that we have a road layer that we'd like to use. So it's just applying the default material. So we're gonna switch over to our layers parameter, layer parameters inside of our material instance. We're gonna add a new layer. Don't know why it's calling that layer six when it's really layer five. So we can just go ahead and rename that. Maybe later on, we'll go and rename these according to what they're actually distributing. And I'm just going to expand the layer four dropdown so we can see all of the different types of assets we have available to, to us. And for the layer asset, we're just going to hit search in content browser. We can see that's an MLP landscape layer. So we're going to go and drag that up onto our newly created layer. And if that didn't work, we're just going to hit the little use selected asset button there. And then I'm going to minimize the scalar parameters for now. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the blend asset there. So I'm going to find the material layer blend PE landscape. And I'm going to drag that up. And if that again doesn't work, I'm going to hit the little arrow. Don't know why that doesn't work sometimes. 
And then the last thing is we just need to make sure that this new layer that we've created, layer five, it knows which bit of the uh, of that ID map texture to look for. And of course, we're gonna be looking for the fifth bit. If the last layer was using the fourth and we've just added a new one, then we're gonna set it to use layer five. And similarly, uh, we're going to want to make sure that uh, we're, able, we're setting the, uh, the material inside of the scalar parameter tabs there. We're gonna be setting the material selection too, because if not, it's just gonna be using that default material. So if we go material selection, we can start to cycle through these materials there. And you can see that we're picking which of the textures from that array that we created that we want to uh, assign wherever there is a road. And if I go up to uh, an unidentified selection, you can see that material selection there now, it's just going to be using a solid color. So that's what we're going to want to replace inside of the texture. So let's just open up the texture array, which contains all of the layer information. There we go. And you can see that we've only filled out the first one, two, three, four, five indices of this texture array. Currently, there are eight possible elements. We can add as many as we like just by clicking add element here. So really the number of layers that we can have on our terrain is only limited by the number of textures inside of this texture array. In fact, as we add more textures to this array, we're not going to dramatically increase the shader complexity of the landscape. We're just going to increase the amount of texture memory that is being used. So that material selection is currently set to six. We can actually go down to five uh, and it's appearing to, to look very yellow, um, which I'm not entirely sure why that is, um, considering that the, it's, it's this light blue uh, in the texture array. But um, we're not gonna worry about that for now. We're just going to find something to replace this index with. Uh, so basically, if we pick one of the other indices, if we pick four, we're gonna get the gravel. We'll just show that there. We can see that we're getting that index with the gravel inside of it. So we just need to add a texture to the fifth index. So we're gonna go back to Quixel Bridge, just like we did when we initially set up the material there. And once we're inside a bridge, uh, we're gonna navigate to uh, have a look through, find the textures we want. You can see I've already got a whole load of favorites. Uh, and then once we've got our favorites selected, we're just gonna go ahead and pick the one we like and hit send to Unreal, like so. So I've sent a few textures over to Unreal already. Uh, if I go to my Megascans surfaces folder, uh, filter by texture, I can just flick through here. Maybe if I increase the size here, you can flick through the, uh, the textures that I've got. And I wanna go ahead and assign a kind of nice dirt uh, maybe dry, this dry riverbed texture here is going to work quite well. So to replace that sort of neon green that we're currently seeing on all the paths, all I need to do is drag that and replace that light blue, which is index five. Now we're getting something, this is kind of looking okay, but we're getting some weird behavior in the texture. And that is because Unreal really likes, whenever you add a new texture to that array, really likes to turn off sRGB. I don't know why, maybe it's a bug. Okay, there we go. Our texture array is back to looking how it should. And go ahead and hit save and indeed now if i just full screen that we can indeed see that we are getting our kind of dirt texture being applied onto our terrain uh, where we have our paths okay so that's uh, that's looking pretty neat um it's probably a bit bright for my liking so i'm going to go back to my material instance and i'm just going to go uh, inside of that tab layer 5 tab and i'm going to go ahead and play with that brightness setting a little bit sort of try and make it fit bit to get better together. We haven't really talked about these panel, this panel yet, but there's gonna be a bunch of settings in here that you can use to modify the look of each layer. And I think 0.5 there, I'm a lot, I'm a lot happier with that. I could of course uh, play around with adding a different selection of textures to my texture array, but I'm gonna leave that to you. You can play around and really come up with your own kind of creative looking landscape, uh, approach it your own way. Uh, this is really just uh, enough for now. Uh, so I'm gonna go back to my Pegasus, Pegasus color array I'm going to open the normal array and I'm going to open the masks array as well. And remember, you've just got to make sure that you assign the correct matching textures for each indices, for each index uh, that we've chosen in the color there. So if I go down and make sure that I'm on index five, I navigate to that location, open my normal texture, and I'm just going to fill out index five with that reference there. And then I'm going to do the same with the masks texture. We didn't have to uh, fuss around with setting up new landscape layer samples or new landscape layer weights inside of the material uh, or enter in the landscape sort of modes panel. Uh, it's all just controlled through that one single uh, ID map texture. Uh, and then the material instance is flexible enough to accommodate uh, these sort of changing uh, texture arrays, uh, which we can continue to add to uh, and add basically as many layers as we want with a nice iterative workflow and pipeline between Houdini and Unreal. That's it for the roads. You could take this a lot further uh, and I'm sure that uh, some, many of you will, 
so this was really just to give you a taste of of, of what's kind of possible uh, there with Houdini's tools for uh, for sort of doing uh, non-standard sort of kinds of uh, terrain work uh, there. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close it out here. And in the next video, we're going to start looking at filling up our terrain with some uh, some foliage uh, and other sort of scattered meshes. Um, so that's what the sort of remainder of this series is going to be looking at. It's how do we really just uh, populate this world with uh, all of the kind of props and other elements that will make it come to life. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.